Are you having issues with the file format on your new mirrorless camera? Or annoyed at how Adobe Lightroom isn't fully compatible? Have you got storage problems with larger file size from high megapixel sensors? Or maybe you're feeling limited by proprietary formats like DNG and PSD. And then there's all those expensive card readers. Rumour has it I've got a process that might just work for you. Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to the channel. Before moving on to storage and backup, we'll talk about the problem many see with a new camera, and that is the problem of reading and translating the file structure correctly. Programs like Adobe can be very slow to adopt new file formats like CR3, and even when they do, it's a compromise. Because they have to back-engineer the file system, this means they don't fully translate data held in the CR3 file, and this can lead to issues in resolving the colour, focus, noise and sharpness in the original file structure. Now most of these issues can be got around using the power of Adobe software, especially when you include third-party solutions for camera matching profiles like Colour Fidelity or Will Godlets at an additional expense. But you also need the latest version of Adobe software for the latest file compatibility. And this ties you into a subscription. So even if you own an older copy like CS6, you aren't going to get the updates and you won't be able to read the latest file systems like CR3. Well, there is a free way to resolve these issues and ensure you have the latest Canon algorithms for translation that will result in the best image quality to start your edits with, no matter which editor or how old your software is. Canon make their own editor available as a free download to owners of cameras which take raw images. This software is called DPP4. Some people never hear of it, and others avoid it because it's seen as being clunky and difficult to use. But today I'm going to talk you through a simple automated process which will ensure you get the official Canon supported colour, sharpness, noise, lens correction and focus all baked into a 16-bit TIFF file which can be used in any editor. But first just a note on importing images. There's no need for a special card reader that can cost hundreds of pounds. Just use the USB-C cable that came with the camera and import it via Canon Neos Utility. My cable connects to a USB 3 port, as shown by the blue bar inside the connector. If you have a USB-C or Thunderbolt port on your computer, it might be worth getting a new cable to speed up your imports. I use the Canon EOS 3 utility to import my photos. This creates a good file system in the drive of your choice. And it has various settings which prevent duplicate downloads and which read in any in-camera ratings, which is also useful. We'll talk about that in the next step. The DPP software can be found on the Canon website. Download and install the DPP4. Open the directory where you imported your photos, and this can be an external or internal media, but I'd recommend copying these files to your fastest drive to speed up the process. It can make a huge difference if you have a fast drive like an SSD. Use that to store your imported files. Once you open the photo directory and browse the photos, at this point you can triage those images and mark the good ones. You can then delete the others, like duplicates, out of focus, and other bad images. At this point, any photos you've rated in camera will be recognised by DPP. Another feature worth using in DPP is that it will display the focus point when the image was taken. And this can help you quickly screen images for where you missed focus and delete them. It all speeds up that triage process. Next step is to choose that first image, and do the basic edits like exposure correction, lens correction and white balance. It 
These are typically the edits you do to every image. If you're comfortable using DPP-4, you can do more edits here like recover shadows and selective colour adjustments, all of which is better done in DPP. As Canon understand the camera sensor and the lens better than anyone. There are a number of useful YouTube videos on how to get the best out of DPP-4 and I recommend you watch them if you plan on using it more. But assuming you would rather do your edits elsewhere, then just stick to the basics. Any edits you choose can be saved in a recipe and then applied to all other images. This is useful for the type of corrections you typically carry out on all images, i.e. ones that aren't image specific. When you have your recipe copied, or if you're using one you've previously saved, it's a simple matter to apply that to all other images. Once you're happy with your images, press Command A on a Mac to select all. Then back at menu, select batch process. This allows you to bake in all those official Canon corrections and create a 16-bit TIFF file for import into the editing software of your choice. In the settings, you'll notice you can also set the photo editor you want to open the TIFF files with. Once all TIFF file images are created, the editor you choose will open the images and you can import the TIFF files. At this point, once you've checked the TIFF files have transferred correctly, you could delete the CR3 files and save space. The TIFF file carries all the data from the CR3 file. There's a benefit to creating your TIFF file here. Lightroom creates TIFF files for each time you transfer them to an external program like Photoshop or a third-party editor like Topaz Denoise. So creating them directly from DPP4 saves this step. TIFF files created in DPP-4 also retain all the official Canon data and it includes the ability to layer images. However, if you find this process too cumbersome and if you have an editor that can already open CR3 files, you could take a shortcut method of relying on this back-engineered approximation of the data and use the editor's power to arrive at a photo of your liking. In this case, I would still recommend the use of a colour profile, like Will Godlet's. I have no affiliation to Will, but I'm happy to recommend his product. The R5 and R6 profiles are noticeably different and better than the standard Adobe profiles. I've also tried the colour fidelity profiles, but I prefer Will's. I may cover installing and using these third-party profiles and setting them as default in a later video. Adobe changed the way they do this and it's not as straightforward as it used to be. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that in the comments below. And now for the storage and backup section I promised you. The good news, or should I say excellent news, is that Amazon have updated the Photos app to recognise CR3 files. Previously these were unrecognised and as such counted against your 5GB limit. But since the update all CR3 files are included in the unlimited allowance. So make sure you have downloaded the latest version of Amazon Photos app installed. Then using this interface, go to the backup section and click add backup. Navigate to the folder that you wish to back up and that's it. The selected folder will now be automatically backed up along with any changes as long as the Amazon Photos app is running and logged in. I have another tip here. If you want to manage or download any files, it's best to do this via the online Amazon Drive interface, which includes the photo browser. There are two ways to access this. And firstly, if you Google Amazon Drive login, it takes you to this page. And this will open the browser interface to access all your files and photos, as both are linked in the same cloud data.
but you may find it simple to use the alternative method. If you right click on your name at the top right of the Amazon Photos app, you'll see a number of options. Choose Your Photos and this will take you to the same online storage and menu item where you can manage your files and sort by date, location and even people who appear in the photos. Now does that worry you? A word of warning here. Amazon are not alone in scanning your photos collection. Google Drive also do this and even Apple will be partially introducing this process. Personally I prefer Apple's approach because they do this on device and it's only in a very narrow area like child exploitation but Amazon and Google encroach on privacy much more when scanning your photo collection in the cloud. It's your choice and I'll only mention it to make you aware. Now if you made it this far this next video is what Google is suggesting you like to watch and this is another option you may want to watch. And I'll see you in the next video.